Okay, uh, before we start, we'll play a game called Name the Animal. Uh, <laughs> where does this eyeball come from? Mike, you'll know. Squid? No, it's related. It's a, it's a cephalopod, but it is... It's a cuttlefish. <laughs> it's <laughs> not, not edible. Uh, it lacks a cornea, has a crystal lens, and the nerve fiber actually leaves the retina from the back. But huh. not relevant to this discussion. <laughs> <laughs> but interesting. Yeah, I actually uh, took this picture in Borneo before it ran away. <laughs> but it, they're pretty temperamental animals. So, um, my case is a pretty uh, uh, difficult uh, manifestation of a common problem. Uh, this is an, an adolescent, a 17 year old Asian girl who was referred for iritis. She complained of a three-year history of floaters, loss of vision of both eyes, and she was recently admitted to uni for suicidal ideation. She denied redness pain flashes. Uh, she did have some floaters. Uh, she has a history of depression, anorexia, uh, anhedonia, suicidal ideation, auditory hallucination, so major depressive disorder with uh, psychotic feature, features. Otherwise, uh, family history and social history unremarkable. She's a first generation immigrant. Uh, she's on lamotrigine uh, and uh, quetiapine, except for the above, her review systems was negative. On presentation, she was 2400 and 2300, the normal IOB, one plus cell in the anterior chamber, two plus vitreous cell, one plus vitreous haze, inferior vitreous hemorrhage in the right eye with multiple areas of periphlebitis, mild disc edema and cystoid macular edema, and kind of a similar picture in the left eye. Massive cystoid macular edema in both eyes explaining her loss of vision. And when you look at the angiogram, there's this diffuse leakage from the, uh, from the arterioles, venules, and capillaries with uh, a lot of leakage from the nerve as well. As seen in the late stage here with kind of this dark um, darkening of the uh, watershed areas. This is what we call a kind of a foreign-like appearance and leakage first described by Janet Davis. So this is uh, an intermediate uveitis. Is it inflammatory or infectious? It's important to rule that out. And there's a very strong component of retinal vasculitis. Is retinal vasculitis the primary problem? It seems more like uh, the intermediate uveitis is the primary problem. Uh, checked her for um, systemic issues. DB was negative. Syphilis testing was negative. ACE and lysozyme, HIV, viral hepatitis. Looked for some of the uh, labs that may be associated with uh, retinal vasculitis and found them to be negative. And so our final diagnosis was intermediate uveitis of the pars planitis variety with significant cystoid macular edema, vascular leakage, neovascularization, and vitreous hemorrhage. And we really don't know how long this had been going for because she'd been admitted, she'd been suicidal, uh, she had symptoms for three or four years. So, in co consultation with the patient psychiatrist, which is important when you start patients on steroids, um, we started her on uh, prednisone. And concurrently, because this was likely a chronic issue, started her on steroid sparing immun immun immunomodulation with mycophenolate at one gram twice daily. Unfortunately, on steroids, she uh, did report improvement in her symptoms, but she did uh, start to have greater suicidal ideation, aggression towards her peers, family, uh, and had some auditory hallucinations again. So steroids were quickly withdrawn down to 20 milligrams, and intravitreal steroids were injected into both eyes with incomplete resolution of CME in both eyes. At that time, no steroid-associated ocular hypertension was noted. The dose of cell step was increased to 1,500 twice a day, which is your maximum dose. Three months on cell sept, and after intravitreal steroids, you can see she still has a lot of macular edema. 
with maybe some improvement in leakage, but <coughs> let me pick on a resident again. Uh, Dina, there you are. Uh, what do you see that's different about this angiogram, and specifically in the right eye? Exactly. So that's actually new vascularization. And in intermediate uveitis, you can have new vascularization for two reasons. Number one, because there's a lot of peripheral non-perfusion, which is common. And secondly, because um, VEGF is an acute phase uh, reagent and can, in fact, uh, be found in elevated levels when there's a lot of inflammation. Therefore, you can end up with new vascularization of the disc or elsewhere. Um, and this can often be a source of vitreous hemorrhage. Um, in this case, there was some vitreous hemorrhage in Fierdi in both eyes, not shown in the pictures. Um, so therefore, laser was performed to areas of retinal non-perfusion in the right eye. We started adalimumab, Humira, with improvement in CME, but not complete resolution. Three months after starting Humira, uh, she, um, 40 milligrams every two weeks, two months after intravitreal steroid in both eyes. This is the first time in her, her entire treatment course that the CME mostly went away. Her vision is now 2100, likely limited by um, kind of these areas of ellipsoid zone loss in both eyes as a result of chronic cystoid macular edema. Still has areas of uh, near vascularization, so it's slightly more consolidated, and three months later she comes in with dense vitreous hemorrhage in the right eye more than the left. Vision has now decreased to 2,400 in the left and counting fingers at three feet in the right. So you can see hints of macular edema in both eyes, quite, quite, quite a lot of macular edema, but the view is limited by the vitreous hemorrhage. So we finally bit the bullet. Uh, did a parsnel vitrectomy with augmentation of the peripheral laser and uh, implanted a flucinolone acetonide uh, implant, red cert, in the right eye and performed a similar procedure in the left eye. Her vision stabilized to 2060 in both eyes, resolution of uh, CME, and her vision is limited by macular atrophy. So, in summary, this is an 18, now 18 year old girl, actually, now she's 20, but uh, then 17, 18 year old girl with severe bilateral intermediate uveitis, complicated by massive CME, vitreous hemorrhage, and <coughs> macular atrophy. She was unable to tolerate steroid due to uh, suicidal ideation. So, vitreous uh, intermediate uveitis can present with varying degrees of severities. Manifestations can include vitreous cell and haze. Retinal vasculitis is a pretty common feature. CME is the most common cause of vision loss, of irreversible vision loss in these patients, cataract, glaucoma, and optic nerve edema. Retinal non-perfusion with neovascularization in, re in the retinal periphery, and, um, uh, sorry, retinal non-perfusion non can cause neo on the optic nerve or elsewhere, vitreous hemorrhage in six to 28%, as well as epiretinal membrane. Late findings do include cyclic membranes, tractional or ecmatogenous retinal detachment, hypotony, and tysis. Um, Marissa, Al, and myself have found that there are kind of two main presentations of intermediate uveitis. There can be that indolent, quiet kind, which you may not have to treat. Uh, but in children especially, sometimes you are faced with these really, really bad intermediate uveitis cases with bad uh, traction at the ciliary body, cyclitic membranes, and they present early with hypotony, and they present early with these vitreous membranes. Uh, th those require more severe, uh, more uh, aggressive treatment. As Al alluded to, and as Chris will uh, talk about as well, there we do utilize a step ladder approach to treatment. You can start with steroids; they may be oral, injectable, subtenons, or intravitreal. Immunomodulatory therapy, you should not be shy about starting this, especially in chronic disease. Chronic disease that requires chronic treatment. Anti-metabolites, uh, anti T-cell inhibitors, biologics, and cytotoxics may all be used. Although cytotoxics have uh, kind of gone out of favor, 
with the advent of rituximab and other such biologics. Surgical intervention may be utilized sparingly in patients with intermediate uveitis. Vitrectomy has been shown to, in some cases, even bring about some degree of remission, be it drug-free or otherwise. Vitrectomy in conjunction with cryotherapy to the snowbank uh, or to the pars plana inferiorly, as well as laser, may also be shown to bring about some degree of remission in some cases. Steroid implants have been used and should be used sparingly for intermediate uveitis. They have in the MUST study, um, uh, which was a national eye institute funded randomized clinical trial comparing systemic steroid with immunosuppressive treatment with a red desert implant at three years showed that uh, the visual acuity was not significantly different in the two groups, the uh, redisert versus immunomodulation group. However, this is not a benign treatment. Uh, cataract surgery occurs in, uh, in almost 100% of patients, to be honest. 61% uh, end up with elevated IOP. The three-year data shows uh, elevated IOP higher than 70%. And over 35% require incisional glaucoma surgery. Not everybody can be treated with systemic steroids. Um, in a meta-analysis, uh, 935 patients, the rate of psychiatric complaints on steroids, anything from anxiety, agitation, to psychosis, is 27.6%, with 5.7% uh, being severe. And these are, include patients with hallucinations and, um, and suicidal ideation. There is no particular age predilection or dose dependence for these side effects with steroids. There's no significant association with pre-existing mental illness. I find that hard to fathom, but uh, this is what this paper showed. Minimal but statistically significant increased risk in women uh, on steroids of severe steroid-associated psychiatric side effects. Therapeutic vitrectomy can be utilized uh, with good efficacy in patients with intermediate uveitis. Indications do include media opacity, vitreous hemorrhage, inflammatory control. The removal of uh, antigenic material from within the eye can, uh, can decrease the uh, amount of inflammation in the eye. It can be performed in conjunction with uh, cataract surgery, and uh, we have a case series so far of 42 patients, but uh, many more patients are being added to that database by Chris Conradi as we speak, hopefully. Um, uh, and, and really, there is, there seems to be good evidence to support the fact that this is a safe uh, and effective way to manage intermediate uveitis in conjunction with an immunomodulatory therapy and with good patient selection. Vitrectomy can be utilized for the removal of epiretinal membranes, which do develop in patients with uh, IU. Chronic CME can be treated with vitrectomy and internal limiting membrane peeling. Hypotony uh, uh, to remove cyclitic membranes, either endoscopically or otherwise. Rect retinal detachments do occur, uh, especially with peripheral traction in patients with intermediate uveitis. And lastly, the implantation of sustained release steroids, um, Redisert, which is the most commonly used, and now uh, the injectable version, uh, UTIC, which is a, a, a non-biodegradable uh, flucinolone <coughs> implant. All right. Uh, be happy to answer any questions. Yes. So <clears throat> I remember that study came out and, and, and associate that, that there wasn't associated with underlying conditions. But you know, <clears throat> my experience having raised five teenagers is that uh, the majority of teenagers are borderline crazy at some point during that experience. <laughs> Maybe I'm all 100 uh, percent, including my own experience as a teenager. And then uh, also having been on uh, uh, you know high systemic doses personally with uh, reactive asthma at two points in my life, that stuff can drive almost anybody crazy. Oh, absolutely. Even if you're not 
overtly, you say, I think 100% of people, there are a few I hear will tell you that, that, I mean, there are lots of things in there that just absolutely can drive you bonkers. So you add the two together. I can't help but imagine that systemic steroids in teenagers is, is fraught with a, a lot of potential psychiatric side effects. It certainly can be, and you should be ready to withdraw steroids. I had a patient in, um, in San Francisco who I had on steroids who was ready to jump off a bridge. Uh, because he felt he could fly. Um, I, I think steroids should be used with caution. Um, Al? I was just going to say that, you know, I mean, it, when used effectively, I think that steroids can be used, you know, fairly safely. In fact, we have a study uh, of pediatric patients in which we used steroids and immunomodulatory steroids as bridging therapy and immunomodulatory therapy and had zero side effects, and we were able to get every one of those patients, almost every one of those patients, 90% of them off steroids. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, you know, it's it's very useful and important in selected patients to, you know, really quell their inflammation quickly. Is, the, is a big thing there to, to use it as a short period of time, exactly. getting them off relatively rapidly? I, I think so. So, you know, it's we okay, arbitrarily talk about it for a three-month yeah. period of time, yeah. Yeah. you know, um, starting at high dose and then tapering fairly rapidly. In, in general, if you, if you start with one milligram a kilogram, um, so in an adult, typically 60, then you're at risk for a lot of psychiatric complaints and avascular necrosis of the hip, osteoporosis, uh, steroid myopathy, etc. But once you drop below 30, those risks start to go down. In general, with, with chronic disease, you never treat uh, steroid monotherapy is A, not going to be effective, and B, is going to be fraught with a lot of... Right. Uh, side effects that you don't want to deal with. Um, uh, so really, early institution of steroid sparing immunomodulatory therapy is, is key here. But we tell patients the only thing that works today is steroids. So right. when we start the immunomodulatory therapy, it's at least you know six weeks, eight weeks. Until it's the only thing that will pick up quickly. Plus the seven year results of the MUST trial you know, showed that actually systemic therapy with immunomodulation and steroids were actually proven were significantly more efficacious with, with you know six line improvement delta right. visual acuity than than the implant. There, that's fraught with problems itself. But uh, you know, so it's it, it, it really the bottom line is that therapy has to be individualized to the patient. Really. So, um, see you guys.